Let us go to God in prayer. Oh, God, how we thank you for another day, another Sunday you blessed us with. Here we are in 2021. So many things are going around us, and we just thank you for covering us, for blessing us in spite of all of those things. Now, today as we worship you, we pray that we be able to push all of those things aside and be encouraged today that a word would be spoken. We would sing songs, Lord God, that would quench our spirit and our heart. So we would be encouraged in Jesus' name that we can then go encourage someone else. We thank you, we bless you, and we love you because you are worthy to be praised. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go, DC3. Hallelujah. Now listen, this song is for all the dreamers out there. We just stopped by this Sunday morning to let you know that it is your season, it is your time. Don't give up. Hang in there. Come on, help us sing this song. And it goes like this. I believe, I believe, just God, that it's my season. That it's my season. If you believe it, I want you to get up out of your living room and wave your hands. I believe, yeah, that it's my time. It's And you know what? I can feel it. I can feel it. I'm telling y'all, breakthrough is in the room. Say, breakthrough is in the room. My God, I've been waiting and anticipating. Say, anticipating. God's getting ready to move. Say, God's getting ready to move. For I know. Come on, sing it. Say, for I know. My God is working in me. With Just for me. I want you to get up on your feet. Come on, sing it. Say, say it's gonna be. God is about to blow your mind. I'm telling you, God is about to open up the windows of heaven. Everybody say, God's gonna open the windows of heaven.
you believe that it's going to be big. Anything that God does, he does it big. We doing it big in 2021. Father, we bless you right now because you spoke it over our lives, God. And now the time has come for it to manifest. We trust you and we believe you. And thank you, oh God, that we are mature enough to handle it. Hallelujah. Yeah, I love God. You love God. What's wrong with you? I love God. You love God. What's wrong with you? I don't think that I can live no other way. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, family. Welcome to DC3. I'm your boy, Pastor DK Hammonds coming to you live in the midst of service. Got a few announcements I wanna pitch your way, but before those announcements, I need you to do me a favor, right? Last week we asked for you to share. I want you to do the same thing. Here's why you share, because it shows us who's engaging with our community, and we wanna be able to keep track of that, so this is one of the, one of the many ways that we could do it. So do me your huge favor, yeah? Share this with your community, like it, Share with as many people as you can. Our goal is to get 100 shares by the end of this service. Can you do that? Will you agree? All right, cool, cool, cool. Here are a few announcements for you. Remember today, January the 31st, we are having our church anniversary. And three words to, to actually consider, celebrate, connect, and contribute. We want everybody to be a part of it, so do me a huge favor, go to our, our online apparatus, go to our website, go to the app and register. It's gonna be at 1145. I know also, you like your t-shirts, we have t-shirts available, take the initiative t-shirts, you can come by the church, you can go to the application itself, or you can go to the website to order those t-shirts. Also today, we have, a great, we have a lot of great things happening today. We have our open house for our youth, our young people, so we gonna really rock with y'all. Yeah, we gonna get it in. So do me a huge favor, if you plan on coming to our open house, register online, go to the application so you can be a part of the uh, open house. Also, this is so important. This is, voting is so important to our church. It's a part of who are, it's part of who we are. It's a part of our ethos. And so guess what? We're in a time of voting season. So please, early voting is Jan January the 20th to January the 29th. Election day is February the 2nd. Listen, you can come between eight and five. Uh, and then uh, on January 28th through the 29th, you can come between seven and seven. Election day, February the 2nd, 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. right here at DC3 Community Church. I know you also asking, Pastor DK, man, well, how can we connect to like small groups or something? Well, we've assembled, we have assembled a super team that's gonna help you with small groups and breakout sessions right here at Disciple Central. We call it Kings on Assignment, and we also got the Queens on Assignment. More details will be unfolded soon. That's gonna happen on February the 9th, 16th, and 23rd between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m. You don't wanna miss it, go register, go boldly to register right on our website, right on the application for those classes. They're gonna be dope. I'm one of the speakers, Pastor Eric King, Derek Ship, Paul, Pastor Paul, Cornell, Deacon Cornell, and you got the lovely, lovely ladies, uh, uh, Sister, I mean, Lady Nicole. You have, um, a, I mean, this is just a super team. Uh, Stacy Taylor, Regina King, Melissa, Melissa Young, all of these people will be here to have classes and community just for you. You gotta register to come and be a part, so do that for your boy if you don't mind. On the second Sunday, shout the second Sunday in the chat for me. On the second Sunday, we're gonna do something new. It's called Communion and Conversations. Every second Sunday after 8 a.m. and 10.30 service, uh, and, and at, at the times of 9.30 and 11.45, please sign up on the app and on the website for more details. I know y'all are also asking, y'all are also asking how can we connect how can we be a part uh, of, of the morning devotional? All you gotta do is go right to our website. Pastor King is coming there every single day and you can be a part of the website. So do that for your boy if you don't mind. And you know, if you, if you, if you, want, if you want to, bring some Hebrews. 
bring you some Folgers. Come in and post up and, and watch the devotional as well. Now we're at a very important time. It's our giving time. Do me a huge favor if you don't mind before I pray for you. Go ahead and get your seed. Go ahead and get your money. Go to Givelify. Go to the application itself and send those resources in. We're doing ministry, guys. Our church is wide open. We have a giving pantry. We're giving food away. There's voting happening. There's cry. Everything is happening right here at Disciple Central, and we can't do it without your resources. So do me a huge favor. Let's go ahead and let's have the greatest giving day we could possibly have right here on our church anniversary. And here's the next thing. I want to pray for you. But before I pray for you, I want you to go into that chat and send your prayer request. Say, Pastor DK, this is what I need prayer. Well, no matter what the request, no matter how big or small it is, I wanna be able to pray for, you, pray for you before we are completed. Also remember, our youth, they're having open house January 31st. Please register, please become a part. We need parents, we need youth to be a part of this ministry. So I don't wanna belabor the point while we're in the midst of giving, I wanna get right into praying for you so that we can go right, so we can continue right into worship. So let me pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to pray. We thank you for all of the great things that is happening right here in the midst of our church. And we are so grateful and we are so thankful that you've given us the opportunity to serve our community verse both inward and outwardly. And while we pray, God, there are requests happening right now in the chat. And God, I want you to touch each person's request. I want you to touch their homes, touch their family, touch their finances and build up their faith in the mighty matchless name of Jesus that we pray Amen. So y'all know what time it is. Let's continue in worship. Peace. Let's worship him. Let's thank him. I realize that it is in him that I live, I breathe, I move, and I have. Bless your name, yeah. Oh, listen. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we wait, Jesus? He the glory fill this place. Just wanna be with you. Yes, God. Just wanna be with you. Yes, the world, yes, the world will bow down. Bow down and say you are not. Every man, every man will bow down. Bow down and say you are king. So let's not wait. Let's start right now. Come on, say. So let's start right now. Why would? Why would let's declare it. Come on. Say, king. The world say, Yes, the world will bow down, will bow down and say, Every man, every man will bow down, will bow down and say, You are me. So let's start right now. Say, So let's start right now. Why would, Why would we, we can praise, we can praise. Teresa
the word of the Lord. Lift your hands right now. God has a word for you on today. Come on, sing it. Just ask him to feel.
Come on, worship. Worship that right there. King of power. Keep that going right there because that's who we come to worship today. You're right there on that screen, wherever you are right now. Just remember, he is the king. That means he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be given honor and glory to. So wherever you are, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're dealing with today, I know you have desire, and that desire is just, desire is just like mine. You just want to be with him. And let me tell you, God wants to be with you more than you want to be with him. Matter of fact, he's waiting on you to be able to connect with you, to worship with you. So why don't you go ahead, come on, sing that one more time, praise team, because somebody needs to know that they want to take initiative and say, God, I just want to be with you. I don't want you questioning my loyalty. I don't want you questioning my relationship. And I'm not going to let this pain stop me from working for you. I'm not going to let this debt stop me from working for you. I'm not going to let this frustration let me stop from working for you. I just want to be with you. Come on, come on, minister that right now. Sing with him. King of glory. Come on. Come on. Worship him. Press through it right now. Ask him to feel your health, feel your heart, feel your job, feel your sorrow, feel everything, every empty place, every broken place. Come on. Come on. We want to dance. Come on. We want to dance. Come on. Give him some glory right now. Give him some glory right now. Lift him up. Come on. Come on, 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 that's what you know, that's what you know, that's what you know, come on, tell him what you're going to do, tell him what you're going to do, come on, come on, King of glory, oh, that's an intimate moment and relationship. Just want to be with you. Oh, yeah, that's good. Come on, think about it. Come on, come on. Give it to me one more time. King of glory. Just type in, I just want to be with you. Just type in, I just want to be with you. Just want Now, where you are right now, go ahead and give him some glory. Go ahead and create that atmosphere. Go ahead and create that atmosphere right where you are. Go ahead and set, that, set the stage right now for God to just reign in your life. For God to just take over everything that's going on. Go ahead and set the stage right now. Don't play with it. Be real with him. Open up your spirit and say, God, whatever I am, whatever I'm doing, I want you to have full control of my life. I trust you. I honor you. I adore you. I give you all of me. Because you are worthy of every single thing. So listen, right now, we are so glad that you're joining us. Do me a favor and go ahead and share right now. Because somebody needs this glory that's taking place right now in your life. Here right now where we are. Because God is everywhere at the same time. But make sure you share it with somebody else so they can connect with what God is doing even right now in this moment. And while you're doing that, we want to welcome you once again to DC3 Online. Welcome you to uh, experience God with us. Yes, not watch, but experience Him with us. Worship Him with us. This is a participation time. It's not just a time to sit back and watch and, and chew your popcorn or whatever you're doing. This is time for us to come together and give Him glory. And while we're doing that today, uh, we are talking about taking the initiative. This is Vision Sunday, and I'm so glad we are here today uh, talking about vision. God has so much left to do, and we want to make sure that we are doing our part. And that's why you see this taking the initiative shirts. This is not just shirts. This is a lifestyle that we're not going to have to um, let God have to uh, push us to do what we need to do. We know our responsibility. So we're going to take the initiative. Make sure at 1145 you are on for the Zoom meeting. So you go to our app right now. Go to the app right now and sign in so we, you don't miss 1145. The whole church and those who love DC3, we're going to be laying out how God is going to move through us as we take the initiative for our lives and do what God calls us to do and make such an impact in this season. Aren't you ready to make an impact for God? Listen, while you're doing that, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 1 through 9 today. 
1 through 9. We're on Sermon 5, Sermon 5 of our Taking the Initiative series. And while you're turning to Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, well, we want to uh, pray continually for the Jones family, uh, one of the long faithful members of Johnson Chapel and then DC3, Reverend Washington Jones. He has been such a great uh, brother and, and servant of the Lord, and we pray for his wonderful family, uh, daughters, Natasha, and uh, uh, also we pray for Reverend, I mean, for his wife uh, who served so faithfully, Miss Geneva, and so many of his family and friends. So we want to lift them up and continue to lift that family up. Listen, you ought to have uh, the book of Isaiah at this moment, chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6, and we're looking at verses 1 through 9 today. And uh, <clears throat> we don't want to just hear the word. We want to be doers of the word. And so today, make sure that you let God enter your heart and let him examine your spirit and ask God, what do you want me to do? And while we're doing that, today is the last day of our 21 days of clarity. I want you to do this right now. I want you to make a mental note to just think back over everything over the last 21 days. I want you to take something even on your notes on your phone or take a note, notepad or a journal. And I want you to just write down the day after service today, over the last 21 days, what has God confirmed? What has God shown me over these last 21 days? What has become more clear to me over these last 21 days? Reflect back over the 21 different topics we looked at and take that time. And then I want you to send an email to check in, C-H-E-C-K-I-N, C H E. C-K-I-N, no hyphen, at dc3online.org. I'm going to get those testimonies. I want to hear your testimonies on what God has made clear in your lives over the last 21 days. I know God's been speaking. I know God's been speaking because I'm praying for you right now. I'm praying that God continues to speak to you and give you revelation. I hope you have Isaiah chapter 6 at this moment. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. If you have that type word, hallelujah, or whatever God blesses you to do. Here it reads in verse 1, verse, uh, uh, chapter 6 of Isaiah. It says, It was in the year the king Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were a mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces. With two they covered their feet. With two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. And then I said, It's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips, yet. I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with the burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips. With it, he said, see, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. And then I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send as a messenger to these people? who will go for us. I said, here am I. I'll take the initiative. Send me. And he said, yes, go and say to this people. I'm going to look at that verse 8 again. He says, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I want to lift up for a thought today. Why does God have to ask us twice? Why does God have to ask us twice? Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for this moment. We ask right now that you speak to our hearts, forgive us of our sins, clear any distractions. And those who are sitting watching, those who are moving around and watching, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you arrest their spirit and their mind, that they hear you speak even now. And then also act on what we hear. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people say amen. And a man. Uh, there's a quote by uh, Leonardo da Vinci that says, I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. 
we must apply. Being willing is not enough. We must do. And what Leonardo da Vinci is basically saying is, I can know a whole lot, but if I don't apply what I know, what, what, is, the, what is the use of what I just knew or learned in that situation? And, and then also, I can have all the desire in the world, but if that desire never turns into action, then I'm not maximizing what I'm supposed to be and who I'm supposed to be. And as we've been saying over the last few weeks, uh, the meaning of taking initiative by one author means that, they, that, that you keep going when things get tough. And you do things without being told. You, you find out what you need to know. And then when, when, you, when you find out what you need to know, you keep going and you spot and take advantage of opportunities that others pass by. And what else do you do? You spend more time acting than reacting. And if we're going to be a people who, want God, who, who, who do what God wants us to do and we get God's best, then that means that when God speaks, we ought to take initiative. And what we're talking about today, our title is, Why Does God Have to Ask Us Twice? It makes me be reminded of growing up in a black family with black mama, black daddy, with black cousins and aunts, and everybody held you accountable. Uh, whenever somebody in the village uh, would end up telling you to do something, it was expected, whether it came from your mama, whether it came from your daddy, whether it came from your auntie, especially from your grandma, that when they told you to do something, you knew your role and you should move when they said move. If they asked you to do something, they didn't want to have to ask you twice. And the reason that was because you should understand who they are and you should understand their role and what they have provided for you in their lives. And as we look at our text today, as we talk about this vision Sunday today, God has vision uh, for his people and God has vision through DC3. And as we look at this today, we want to make sure we, we understand that God is, is in the business of helping us push the vision that he has forward. And the question on the table today is, why does God have to ask us twice to do what he's already told us to do? And when we know who he is, and today we want to kind of open up some questions by looking at, uh, open up this question and begin to get some answers by looking at the book of Isaiah today. A familiar passage of Scripture for many who have been walking in the text of the book of Isaiah over the last few years. If you've been around church, uh, you may have heard this preached several times. Uh, but the Word is fresh. The Word is relevant. It's a living Word uh, for these living times. And as we look at our text today, we can find three reasons today uh, walking in the book of Isaiah of why many times God has to ask His children more than once to do what they ought to do just because He is God. And we look at our text today, we can look at verse 6, uh, verse 1, should I say, uh, verse 1 through 4 lets us know the first thing we see in our text that the reason why God many times has to ask us twice or challenge us twice to do what we should only do the first time is this. Here it is. We need to have a divine revelation. And that's it. We'll find out in verses 1 through 4 the reason why God sometimes has to repeat himself to us is we need to have a, de a, define, a, a, a divine revelation. We need to have a divine revelation. And where do I get that from? Look with me here in the text. And we understand uh, by Isaiah is the king during that time. Uh, Isaiah is the king uh, during the time that uh, 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 Isaiah is uh, doing prophecy. He's speaking. He's doing what God has assigned him to do and called him to do. And as we understand that from verses, from chapters 1 through 5, uh, we begin to come in now to chapter 6. Uh, chapter 6, uh, Isaiah is not new on the block, but God now is about to do something new in his life, new in his ministry, new in his assignment. And what we still do is look at verses 1 through 4. It says, it was in a year that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. They were calling out to each other, holy, holy, holy. Uh, what are we talking about here? Uzziah was a king who ruled for some 52 years. But we understand that at some point, uh, he ended up doing what God had, had uh, forbidden him to do. And we understand the last few years of his life, he had, to, he had to live those lives, live that life socially distanced from the community. 
And why is that? Because he had leprosy. Because he disobeyed God, now he has been cursed with leprosy and shunned from the community. And now he, in authority, now position is about to change. And when we see Isaiah, he begins to share here in verse 1. He says, it was in the year that King Uzziah died. That's when I saw the Lord. That's when I had a vision. That's when I had a revelation. And when we begin to study this, uh, we have to be careful and begin to understand some things that it's not clear based on research whether it was the day Uzziah died that, that Isaiah got a vision. We don't know if it was a, a couple of months before uh, Uzziah died that Isaiah got a revelation. We don't know it was just a few months after Uzziah died that he got a revelation. But we do know that it was in the year, within a 12-month period, uh, six before, six after, whatever the case, within this period of time, there was a revelation that came to Isaiah. And we understand this, Isaiah had this revelation. He, he had a revelation, and when we start talking about revelation, we understand that revelation means that something was revealed, something was shown, something was laid out for Isaiah for him to see that he had not seen this way before. And as we understand that, what are we looking at? What, what three things do we see in the text? What does the text teach us today? Uh, what he saw in his revelation. I, I'm glad you asked because the first thing we see is he had a revelation of the Savior. The text says he had a revelation of the Savior because he says, I saw the Lord. He was high, sitting on a throne, a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. We understand he saw the Savior, and what we see here, we recognize uh, it is Adonai he saw. Of course, God has many names, and we understand that this actually, when you look at the book of John chapter 12, verse 41, it points to who he actually saw. Uh, Jesus comes back and confirmed uh, in the book, in the Gospels, which he is, it comes back and confirmed in the Gospel of John, that it's confirmed that Adonai is being seen right here in the book of Isaiah. In other words, he saw the pre-incarnate Christ in the Old Testament that we see here in chapter 6. He saw him. He saw the dominion, the ruler, uh, the king of kings here in Isaiah chapter 6 as we're talking about that. He got a revelation of who the Savior was. And, and not only did he get a revelation of who the Savior was, he also got a revelation of who some servants were. He saw some servants in this piece. He said he was sitting on a throne, and, and then he says in verse 3, attending him. With mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they flew. He sees some seraphim, and we understand seraphim are, 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 are angels, and they had six wings based on, on the text. And we understand that they had two that they end up covering their faces with. They had two that they end up covering the lower part of their body, not just their feet. And then they had two wings in which they flew. These were servants. They were attending to Adonai. They were attending to the Savior. They were attending to the King of Kings. They were serving. And those other two wings were used because seraphim, as we know when we study Scripture, they move very swiftly. They move very swiftly. What he seeing is he's seeing the Savior, and he's seeing some angels serving the Savior with humility, but also with speed. That he says, listen, these seraphim are moving. They are serving. They are attending the Savior. And what they are doing is they're serving him with urgency and humility. And we understand that the servant, the Savior, and the servants were seen, but also he had a revelation of the sanctuary. What do you mean the sanctuary? Because when you look in the text, you can understand through history that, that prophets usually didn't deal with the sanctuary, but now we see that it seems that Isaiah is on the outside of the sanctuary, and the veil of the temple is about to be opened, and now he's seeing the Savior, now he's seeing the servants, and now he's also getting the revelation of the sanctuary. And the text shows us here in verse number 3, talked about uh, the, the calling out of each other and the worship of the servants. And then verse 4, their voices shook the temple to its foundation, and the entire building was filled with smoke. And then he says uh, the whole building was filled with smoke whole building. Uh, the train of his temple uh, came through. It wasn't just a part of the building. The whole temple was filled with the glory of God. Listen, what I want you to understand, he says God's presence was there. It was, it was not, uh, 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 it was no, no doubt that God was fully in the building. It was no doubt that God covered from corner to corner of the sanctuary, that God was present. He had the Savior. He had the service. He now has the sanctuary. And we understand now that he has a divine divine revelation of who God is and what God's about and what serving's about. Let me ask you a question. Uh, well, there, there's, a, there's a quote that says, human speculation 
is no match for divine revelation. Johnny Hunt says that human speculation. You can speculate about who the Savior is. You can speculate about what serving the Savior looks like. You can speculate of what is supposed to take place in the sanctuary. But when you get a divine revelation of the God yourself, then guess what? You got divine revelation and you are certain of what that's supposed to look like. Here it is. We can understand here in the text that we need a divine revelation many times because God should not have to ask us twice to do anything anything for him. And the question I made on the table today is, have you seen Christ for yourself? Have you seen him for yourself? Have you seen him for yourself? Have you come face to face with him? Have you experienced who he is? Have you been shown who he is? Or are you confused on who he is? And let me tell you something. You can get information, but when you get a revelation and he has revealed himself to you, and when you accepted him, you recognize that guess what? He is who he said he is. He's more than who you said, who he said he was. And understand, we need intimate revelation of who Christ is, and that will awaken us, but not just that I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Not only have you, do you have you seen Christ for yourself, uh, do you understand uh, what it means to be a servant for yourself? I mean, do you understand that, that the, surf, the seraphim were moving with excellence? They were moving with humility. And guess what? Are you serving him with, with speed? Are you serving him with excellence? Are you in a hurry to get to the king? Are you in a hurry to meet his needs? Are you in a hurry? And are you humble enough? And are you humble enough to make sure you give him glory while you're moving with urgency because you have a revelation of who he is? Do you know who you're serving? Because when you know who you're serving, you don't drag when you know who you're serving. When you have a revelation of who you're serving, uh, you, 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 don't, you, don't, uh, you, you act with humility in his presence when you understand that. And then not just that, do you understand, have you had a revelation of his sanctuary? Do you understand what the sanctuary means? Right now, many people can't go to their sanctuary. And, 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 and we got to understand that God was dwelling in the sanctuary. He can be in your home. He can be in your car. Wherever you are is the sanctuary. But there is a place called the house of God. And God will come into that sanctuary. And you will need to understand that the only thing supposed to take place in his sanctuary is his glory, his will. And there ought to be parts of the sanctuary that's filled. It should be all the sanctuary. And when all the sanctuary is filled, then guess what? Everything is anointed because he has come in as the king of glory and he's filling that place. And you want to be with him in that place. Here it is. We, we need to uh, have a divine revelation. Have you had a divine revelation? Here it is. Here it is. I'm almost out of here. Here's the second thing we see in the text of why it may be that God has to ask us twice in order to do something. Here it is. Here it is. Check out the text. Text shows us in verses 5 through 7. Here's number 2. The reason why God has to ask us twice to do something is because we need to come to a definitive revelation. We need to come to a definitive rev realization. Sorry. You need to come to a definitive realization. You got a revelation. Something was shown to you. You got a realization that now something became clear to you about yourself. You, you begin to realize something. And, and Isaiah began to realize something after he had a revelation. Now he's come to a realization. And what is that realization? Look at the text real quick. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, then I said, then, then, then I said, then I said, I'm, it's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet... I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. Let me ask you a question right now. Uh, when, 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 who died in your life and, and a revelation came? Who had to pass away in your life before you got a revelation of who God really is? I want you to understand that Isaiah had already been doing some work. But now God says, I want to show you who I am on another level. I have a different a level of assignment for you. And sometimes that happens after death. Sometimes that happens after layoff. Sometimes that happens after disappointment. Sometimes that happens after divorce. Sometimes that happens after losing your health. Sometimes that happens in other circumstances. And God will give us a revelation. But that revelation is not enough if you don't come to a realization. And here's what Isaiah says. He says, after the death of Uzziah, I came to a revelation. I came to a definitive, uh, a, con a conclusive re re realization. And what is the thing that I realized? Here's what he says. First of all, he realized I'm not worthy. 
I'm an imperfect being. I am in the presence of the King of Kings. I am in the presence of Adonai. I am in the presence of the one who is, who was, and who is to come. I am in the presence of holiness. And one thing I recognize about myself, when I got a revelation of who he is for real, then guess what? It made me realize who I am for real. It made me recognize that, that I am not more than what I position myself to be in life. Here's what he does. He says, I'm not worthy. I'm an imperfect being. And what I do sometimes, I drift off the mark. I need to be recalibrated to come center again because sometimes uh, in verse, in chapters 1 through 5, he says, I was doing his will one way, but now that I recognize I got a revelation of him, then I recognize I got to do his will all the way, the way he wants me to do his will. It has caused me to get a realization that some of the things in my life need to be corrected, need to be repositioned, and I need to be recalibrated so I can be in his will fully. Here's what's going on. Text says, text says, he says, he says, he says, he says, I'm not worthy. And, and here's the thing, because my actions aren't always perfect. My actions aren't always perfect. I'm analyzing my actions. My, I don't always do what I'm supposed to do the way I'm supposed to do it. I don't always say what I'm supposed to say and say it the way I'm supposed to say it. What I'm recognizing is that I am not worthy to even be in His presence, and I'm certainly not worthy to do this assignment, but, but by His grace, Here's what I recognize. He spared my life. Oh, y'all not getting that. Here's what he says in the text. Text shows us right here in verse number five, verse, uh, verse number six. He says, uh, then one that said, well, let me go back. Verse five, he said, then I said, it's all over. When I came to this realization, I recognized, you know what? I don't deserve to be here. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, if, if you saw God in any kind of form, uh, it's kind of scared people in the Old Testament because if you saw him, you would die. You're supposed to die when you see God. And what he recognized is, I had a revelation, I had a realization, I saw the king for myself, and yet I'm understanding, I recognize all these things about myself that is not what I thought I was, but one thing I also recognize, I'm still alive, I'm still here, I'm still here. For whatever reason, he spared my life, and I recognize I should have died. I shouldn't be able to be in His presence like this. I shouldn't be able to live in His presence like this. I shouldn't be able to open my mouth and say anything on His behalf like this. And for whatever reason, He spared my life. I ain't worthy. He spared my life, though. He spared my life. He, he recognized I need to be purified for greater service. I mean, I've been doing service, but, but if I'm going to keep doing this, I got to be purified. There are some things that got to be purified because God wants to use my life and use certain parts of my life to do greater works for Him. Look what the text shows us. The text shows us the seraphim recognized he couldn't stay like he was. This is his vision. And look what happened in verse number six when he had the, revel when they had the realization. It says, then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar. Now remember, the seraphim are already hot. Uh, but now they go take a hot coal, and now this hot coal now is brought to where Isaiah is as he's having this realization. And he brought this burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs, and he touched my lips with it and said, this is the coal, uh, this, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Oh, my God. He said, listen, God is getting ready to purify you, Isaiah. Come, let me get this coal. Let me, let me touch your lips because your lips is what he's purifying because he's about to use your voice to do his will. And what you've been doing, you, you got out here where you got dirty some kind of way because here's what you're recognizing. Not only are your lips dirty, but you've been around people with dirty lips and dirty lives and dirty lifestyle and dirty thinking. And here's the thing, you've got contaminated and now what you need is to be purified because this next shift after death, after a political change, after a shift that's taking place, after social distancing of the king, after all these things have taken place, now I'm going to use you in a way I have not used you, but I got to purify you in order to use you in this next move. Listen to what's taking place. He says, he says, check it out, check it out. He says, human speculation is no match for divine revelation. And, and I want you to understand, I want you to understand, he ain't speculating. He got realization. He, he, he says, I need to be, I need to be purified. Uh, and let me ask you a question today. Let me ask you a question today. What area of your life uh, do you need to come to a realization 
of who God is. What area have you looked at yourself and recognized there are some areas in your life that you know ain't right? Are there some areas in your life where you're missing the mark? Are there some areas in your life where your actions don't line up with God? Are there some areas in your life where your heart has impurities, but yet you want to serve God, yet you need to do, be better for God and do greater things for God? Has anybody recognized that God spared your life even in the midst of it, even in the midst of everything? Somebody right now who's watching, you ought to just give God a praise right where you are. You ought to just give God a thank you right where you are. You ought to just give God a hallelujah right where you are. You ought to just thank Him that even though I look at my life and I had re realization that I am not worthy, I'm still here. Matter of fact, you ought to just type, I'm still here. But by the grace of God, I'm still here. And here's what I want you to know. As we look in the text, he says, I need to be purified. And can I ask you, what areas do need to be purified? Because God wants to do something in your life, with your life. He touched Isaiah's lips because that's the area he was going to use. Can I ask you a question? There is somebody who God needs to purify your lips because you're going to speak for him like you've never spoken before. Somebody, God needs to touch your lips because you're going to sing for him like you've never sang before. Somebody, God needs to touch your mind because you're going to think like him like you've never thought before. Somebody, God needs to touch your hands because you're going to serve for him like you never served before. Somebody, need, God need to touch your feet because you're going to walk for him where he tells you to go. God needs to touch your money because you're going to manage it and you're going to use it like he wants you to, like you never have before. Somebody, God needs to touch your schedule because God needs to be in your schedule because you can't get him any kind of way. You can't just throw him in and do what you want to do. God has to be in the midst of it all, purifying stuff that should not be there because God wants to be on your schedule. Who am I talking to? That he needs to touch your heart so your heart can have compassion and some passion and some friendships. He got to purify that some folk are riding dirty and contaminating you and you're contaminating them. And if God and the fire of the Holy Ghost don't come into that friendship, you're going to be crippling what God wants to do next in your life. Do I have somebody? If you believe in somebody, just shout glory. If you believe it, just type in hallelujah. Well, here it is. Can I ask you a question? Due to your actions, do you need a touch? Due to your apathy, do you need a touch? Due to your negligence, do you need a touch? Due to your excuses, do you need a touch? Due to your failures, do you need a touch? Due to being human and not worthy to serve him because you're not God, but you need to be more godly, do you need a touch? We need to come to a definitive realization that God is pure and God wants to use us, but he can't use us in the next level in 2021, in 2022, in 2023 with the same old dirty self, with the same old low living, with the same old excuses, with the same old rationalization. We need a realization of who God is. Well, here's the third thing that we see in the text. Not only God has to ask us twice because we need a divine revelation. Not only does God have to ask us twice because we need a definitive realization, but finally he has to ask us twice because we need to be first on our list of recommendations. What do I mean? Here in the text, in chapter 6, verses 8 and 9, God says, I've cleansed you. I've shown you who you are. I've shown you who I am. Now I have an assignment to do what I call you to do. And the text says, 
sin. I heard the Lord asking. You just missed that. He heard the angel seraphim, but he hadn't heard the Lord. You can be out here talking for the Lord and ain't heard the Lord. You can be out here singing for the Lord, but you ain't heard the Lord. You can be out here working for the Lord, but you ain't heard the Lord. He said, after I got purified, my clarity of hearing the Lord, I heard his voice. And here's what I heard him say. I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send as a messenger to this people who will go for us? God wasn't really asking. He said, you see who I am. You realize what you're not. You know that I have something that I've been wanting you to do. So I'm asking the question. I'm clearing the pad. Who will go for us? Who can I send? He says, Isaiah, I'm talking to you. I'm looking at you because I'm dealing with you. Stop looking around at your friends. Stop looking around at your relatives. Stop looking around at those you think may have higher positions. I am talking to you. Who can I send? Who can I use? And here's what Isaiah's doing. He says, after the revelation and after the realization, I got a recommendation of who can go. I recognize who you are. I recognize what I'm not and what my role is. I'm not the king. I'm a servant of the king. I'm not the king. I'm a child of the king. I got to go where you want me to go. I got to do what you want me to do. Before I got cleansed, before you touched my mouth, before you came and challenged me, I had a recommendation. He could have recommended some other prophets. He could have recommended some other people. But after he had an encounter with the Lord, he said, I got a recommendation. Here am I. Send me. I'll go. Am I talking to somebody that when you see where you are and how good God has been, when you see who he is, he is the Savior. When you see how you should serve with excellence, with speed, with energy, when you see what the church is about, not just sitting and looking, not just giving your praise and not serving nobody. When you see and come to a realization, when you get into real worship, worship will bring you close. Worship will let you see the king in different ways. It will bring you close, not just praise, but worship. Do I have any worshipers who can get with God and say, I just want to be close to you. But let me warn you, when you get close, you start seeing stuff in different ways. When you get close, you start acting in different ways. That's how I know who's a praiser and who's a worshiper. Because anybody can praise the Lord. You can praise him and sit on your job. You can praise him and sit in the back of the church. You can praise him and watch worship every single week. But do I have some worshipers who can say it takes knowing him for yourself. And when you know him, you can't help but do what he's called you to do. Here am I, send me. Do I have somebody who's watching right now? Can lift your hands and say, here I am. It's me. It's me that you're looking for. You don't have to tell me twice to go serve somebody. You don't have to tell me twice to accept my call. You don't have to tell me twice to go usher. You don't have to tell me twice to get in the food pantry. You don't have to tell me twice to go serve in the children's area. You don't have to tell me 
twice uh, to go help out media. You don't have to tell me twice uh, to go get back in church. Uh, go serve somewhere. I got gifts. Uh, I got joy. I got power. I got peace uh, that surpasses all uh, understanding. And do I have uh, somebody who can say, uh, Lord, uh, whatever you want, uh, whatever you need, here am I in me. I don't know what it is all the way, but whatever, whatever, whatever you want, here am I. And what I'll do, I'll serve till I can't serve no more. I'll praise till I can't praise no more. I'll help till I can't help no more. I won't sit on my blessed assurance. I'll get up and do something. I'll get up and help somebody. I'll get up and do what you call me to do. Thank God we had a Savior. We have a Savior who's in the world today. His name is Jesus. He said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. And can I tell you, he served by opening blind eyes. He served by healing the sick. He served by feeding 5,000. He served by dying on the cross. He served until he lay there all night Friday, all day Saturday. Then early, early, early Sunday morning, he didn't have to be asked twice to come to the earth. He didn't have to be asked twice to serve somebody. He didn't have to be asked twice to die on the cross. He didn't have to be asked. He was awakened early Sunday morning and got up with all power in heaven and earth. What is it that God is calling you to? Don't let him have to ask you twice. You'll do it because he saved you. You'll do it because he protected you. You'll do it because he blessed you. You'll do it because he healed you. You'll do it because he's good. Who is the Lord, the King of glory, the Lord, strong, mighty, in battle? Here I am. Here I am. Lord, I'm available to you. My will, I give to you. My will, I submit to you. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll serve who you want me to serve because it's not about me I'm a grateful son I'm a grateful child you ain't got to tell me twice because when I called you you came you didn't have to save me twice once was good enough and so listen don't let God have to tell you twice why? Why would he have to tell you twice? You, don't, you ain't seen who he is. You ain't got a revelation. When you realize who he is, and when you realize he's the Savior, when you realize what church is about, instead of these fake internet prophets, these fake people who don't want to serve and try to drag you down, when you realize who he is, you'll serve you the first time. When you realize who he is, when you got a revelation, when you get a realization of who you're not, and the only thing that you are is because of him, you'll serve. You'll serve with humility. you recognize you should be dead. And every moment you get, you ought to be used to make a difference. You ought to be used to be helpful to somebody, to impact this world. Oh, that's why your Uzziah may have had to die. Because pain has a way of pointing us to purpose. God has to remove some people in our lives because sometimes we can't see him for them. Sometimes we can't see him for the job. Sometimes we can't see him for the lifestyle he's allowed us to have. And when God removes that, can you see him now? No. Can you hear him now? And that's where Isaiah was. That's where we ought to be. God, what do you want? I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Listen, right now, I want you, our praise team is coming right now. And I want you to understand, 
when you get in his presence, you recognize he is the king of glory. You realize that. You realize who he is. If you don't have a relationship with Christ today, we want to offer that to you. Because there is so much, so much love that he has for you, first of all. So many plans he has for you. So don't let your emotions stop you from responding to the voice of God. Just do it. God, I don't know. Just do it. When that parent wants that child to do something, that child don't understand why that parent gets irritated. <laughs> I feed you, I cover you, I take care of your schooling, I take care of everything you have. All you got to do is just be in my house and do what I call you to do, and you're covered. God is looking at us the same way. I clothe you, I delivered you, I set you free, I forgive you, and all I'm asking you to do, all I'm saying is, Stop recommending other people for what I've already commissioned you to do. You. You. When you leave this message today, ask God to give you a revelation fresh of who he is. It's not that Isaiah was a bad person. He just needed a fresh revelation. And ask God to help you come to a realization. <laughs> you ain't got it all together. You're making progress, but he's the king, not you. He's perfect, not you. And that you're living on grace time. You don't want to waste grace time. Because you don't know when it's going to run out. And then finally just ask God, God, show me what you want me to do. You ain't got no fight out of me. You ain't got no fight out of me. If it's something different you want me to do than what I'm used to, you don't have any fight out of me. I just want to know it's you. Here am I just like your servant, just like your son. Here am I, send me, send me, send me, send me, send me. He's calling you today to have a relationship with him because he wants to be with you. Not just to have you do stuff, but to be with you. He loves you. What you can do right now, type in, I want to accept Christ. I want to be saved. You can go right now on our screen, type that in. You can go to our app. You can go to our website and connect. I want to accept Christ. I want to be with him. If you want to grow, you want to find out what you want to do, what the God has assigned for you in your life, meet me at 1145 today. Would you just watch this service and then disappear like you're normally doing? God's calling you. Stop running. Show up. I'm expecting you. You say you believe in Christ. You say you're a member of this church. I'm looking for you because God's looking for you. We got a lot to do. We got a lot we can do. Don't let God have to ask you twice. Just tell him you want to be with him. We'll see you in the morning, God willing, for devotion. Remember to reflect over your 21 days. Get clarity, and now it's time for what's next. What's the next step, God? Obedience is the next step. Trust is the next step changing lives. God bless you. We cry out to you, Jesus. We say, King of glory, say,
Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. 